Hi, I'm Joe, and today we're going to talk about for loops in Python. A loop is used to execute the same block of code multiple times. Each time the loop repeats is called an iteration of the loop. This loop below repeats four times, one iteration for each letter in the word word. For letter in word, print letter. Now you have to understand that in this loop, this letter here is a variable. And what it's going to do is print the variable each time through the loop. So the output you're going to get from this loop is WORD. So each iteration through this loop, the variable letter takes on the next value in the string word. So the first time through the loop, letter is equal to W. Second iteration of the loop, letter is equal to O. The third time, R, the letter takes on the value R. And the last iteration of the loop, letter is equal to D. And all it's doing is printing that letter. Now we don't have to use the variable letter inside the loop. We can do whatever we want inside the loop. All statements indented after the for loop statement will repeat four times. So using exactly the same for statement, first we set x equal to 1 before we enter the loop. Inside the loop we print x. And then we increment x by 2. So what we get is we print 1, 3, 5, and then 7. That's our output. So in this case we're just using the word word because it has four letters. We're not actually using the letter variable at all for anything other than a list counter. Now this type of loop iterates through the letters in a string, and a string can be any length. For loops can also iterate through each item in a list. If you're not familiar with Python lists, we'll have another video covering Python lists coming out soon. For now, I'm going to assume you do understand lists. This example assigns the values red, blue, and green to the list colors. 4x in colors, print x. So it's going to iterate through the list three times. Each time it's going to print one color. So the output you get is red, blue, green. Now here's another list example. And this example we used integers. We used a list of integers from 1 through 5. And we assigned those to the list called count. So we're iterating through these integers using the variable i. And each time through the list we're going to print i, a short string, raised to the set power 2 equals, and then i squared. So our output, as you can see on the right, 1 squared equals 1, 2 squared equals 4, and so on. So five iterations through the loop. Now most for loops use the range function for a simple counter. Range returns a list of integers. Here's an example of the range function. And this one returns 2, 5, and 8 in a list. So the first value is the from value. This is an optional field. It is inclusive, meaning that it actually starts at 2. And it defaults to 0. So if you choose not to put this field, Python will automatically insert a 0 for you. The second field is required. It's the 2 value. And it's not inclusive, so the list only will count up to uh, n minus 1, so in this case 9. The third value is the step field. And in this case we have 3. But if you don't put anything for the step field, because it's optional, Python will automatically insert a 1. It will increment the list by 1. So this field will first return a 2, increment by 3, and then it returns a 5 increment by 3 and it's going to return an 8. The next increment goes over 10 so it's, it stops and will not return 11. So this range function will return a list containing 2, 5, and 8. Some range examples 
So you can see how this works. If you only have one value in the range, it automatically inserts a 0 for the from and a 1 for the step. So range of 2 is going to return 0 and 1. Range of 0, comma 2 is going to return exactly the same thing, and a range of 0, comma 2, comma 1 is going to give you exactly the same return as well. And the reason why is this 0 is the from field is implied. So if you don't provide that, Python will automatically insert it. The 1 is the step, and that also is implied. So if you don't include the 1 or any, anything in the step field, Python automatically inserts a 1. So the two field is the only required field. So it's going to automatically count from 0 to 2 with an increment of 1. This is a range from 0 to 6 with an increment of 1. So it's going to return 0 through 5 in a list. This returns the range from 5 to 9 with increment of 1, 5, 6, 7, and 8. This returns the range from 5 to 9 with an increment of 2, so 5 and 7. So what happens when the from field is bigger than the to field? Well, you have to use a negative 1 as an incrementer, and then we can count backwards. 4, 3, 2, 1. In this case, you're not going to get 0. Again, the 0 is non-inclusive. So now that we've seen how range works, let's look at how using range works in a for loop. So 4x in range of 5. We know that range of 5 is going to return a list of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we know that this loop will have 5 iterations and the x will have the value 0 through 4. Each time through the loop it's going to print x plus 100. So 100, 101, 102, 103, 104. That's pretty straightforward. Now there are a couple of other statements that you can use in for loops. A break statement is used to terminate immediately a loop. So execution continues on the first line after the loop. So in this example, the for loop is going to increment through my number list until it reaches a number that is divisible by 50 and then it will break. And when it breaks it's going to jump right down to this print statement. So execution of the for loop stops immediately. The continue statement ends the current iteration of a loop only. So execution continues at the next iteration of the loop. So in the same example, but replacing that with a continue statement, the execution after it, when it reaches a number that is divisible by 50 is going to jump to after this print in statement which means that it's going to grab the next number on my number list and re continue re iterating through the list. So this concludes our lesson on for loops. I'm Joe James. Thank you for watching.